Work hard, but don't forget to rest with that same intensity. Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today. If you're new, I'm Amanda. Welcome to the channel where we are all about shattering the mental health stigma. If you haven't already, please make sure you make sweet, sweet love to that subscribe button. Give the bell a few kisses so you're not missing any of this content designed to help you with your mental health or help you help someone else. Today, I'm going way back to Voice of Bassaprat. It's been so long since I have dove into them and it boggles my mind. It's been a couple years now. It boggles my mind that there are these amazing bands that fall off my radar just because I'm getting introduced to so much new music here in the community, but also that we've had the community that long. It is so amazing and I'm so grateful for all of you for sticking around and for all of the newcomers that are falling into our little space. I love you guys so much. I have to say though that the only way that I was able to sit down and commit to filming content today was because of my magic mind shot. I just drank it about 20 minutes ago because I needed the energy to be able to film today, to be able to show up today for you guys because with everything going on, so I have two part-time jobs plus the community, plus I'm going to school, plus I have my outreach and my son who's currently on summer break. I get a little scattered and I do take just as much time to rest and relax or at least do so with as much intensity uh, as I was advising you guys but sometimes it's just so it's so difficult to stay in the frame of mind that I need to be in to do the things that I need to do so I feel like I'm pretty excellent with time management but sometimes I just don't have the energy or sometimes my stress is really high and I can't drink caffeine and I engage in a lot of different stress management techniques but sometimes it's nice just to have a little boost and that's where this mental performance shot comes in. There have been 200 scientific studies on the ingredients of these shots so it does help me with energy in a sustainable way unlike uh, most caffeinated drinks or energy shots whatever it helps with uh, stress it helps me feel just more relaxed which it's very hard to find a product that will do both that can help de-stress you but also energize you and it's it's really amazing just for a little bit of mental clarity because I really struggle with that sometimes when I just have so much going on crushes procrastination if you guys want to try this for yourself, go to magicmind.com slash mentalamanda for 20% off or enter the code mentalamanda. I will link that below. But here we go. Voice of Bassaprot, not public property. of the absent angel hit me the hardest because it reflects a sense of desperation for guidance or protection in times of need, in times of trauma, in times of confusion, and they might feel abandoned by God. And I, whether during my devoutly religious days when I was younger or my current more agnostic ones, I struggle with feeling alone in the universe. I struggle with that feeling of abandonment, with that feeling of just being desperate to have an angel appear and say, here's what you need to do and, and help me figure that out. Uh, but the assertion, even though the angel's gone, but I won't be silent uh, when she's blamed, I think is what it said, underscores a commitment to advocacy and to speaking out against injustice and unfair treatment, regardless of whether or not they have the support of an angel or of the general public, and regardless of what they or other people believe in.
they are just having so much fun with this. And I think that this verse and their energy in this verse speaks to that fundamental human right, obviously, to live safely that they were talking about, yet it confronts the reality that this right is often disregarded or undermined. And the mention of people being preoccupied with discussions about dressing appropriately, <laughs> that highlights, I think, the misplaced priorities uh, and distractions that are diverting the attention away from the causes that really matter, from the atrocities that really matter, and the root causes of safety concerns. And I think that there's several ways that this could be taken. It could be taken um, in this cases of sexual assault, where one of the first questions is, well, what were you wearing? Well, it doesn't freaking matter what I was wearing. Did I say no? That is the question. Uh, but I, I get this because I've had my dress brought into question many times, and I don't think I am conservative, but I certainly don't think I dress uh, salaciously. And I've had that brought into question about the authenticity of my story or about my experiences or, well, maybe I deserve to be sexually assaulted. I've absolutely had comments like that even here in this community. And it just really goes to show this criticism. I think it really reflects those social norms and the expectations that often prioritize superficial standards and behavior over more substantive issues like ensuring everyone's safety, like making sure we all have a safe place to talk about our mental health, our well-being, things like that. We're looking in the wrong places. We're talking about the wrong stuff. And we're, in many cases, victim shaming people for what they were wearing and, and saying, well, you deserve to be brutalized because you didn't fit that social norm. And that's not the truth. That's never, ever, ever the truth. The phrase, we're forced to obey unwritten rules, um, that sheds light on the nature of social norms and expectations that dictate behavior and limit our individual autonomy, which goes back to uh, the way we dress, the way we act, what we decide to do, uh, what be it as a profession. This is very much not encouraged in a lot of uh, the cultures where, where Muslims are predominant, where the Muslim faith is predominant. Girls being in rock bands isn't really an encouraged thing, but these unwritten rules can perpetuate harmful attitudes and behaviors uh, that contributes to a culture of compliance and silence in the face of injustice and oppression. girly best friends that you want to hang out with that just make you feel good about yourself and they uplift you. This is feminism. This is women's empowerment. And this is what I want to see more of because it challenges the notion that women's bodies are open to scrutiny or an exploitation, um, asserting that each person has the right to autonomy and agency over their own body, but it does it in a way that I don't think is tearing down other people. It's not tearing down men to get their point across. It's saying we can do better. We're going to stand up for ourselves. We are powerful. We are strong. We can fight back. And, and I love that because it's showing the strength in them and not trying to villainize other people. And I think that, as I was saying, in many Muslim societies, there's these these gender roles that are often very entrenched and women often face systematic discrimination and limited opportunities to education, employment, and personal autonomy. And I think that the repetition of the chorus uh, from the middle of the, this is how the fight will be remembered, this is how the fight will be remembered, it's the collective memory, it's the importance of the collective memory and the historical consciousness of that struggle for justice and equality that we have had to go through. But it's also like a rally cry, in my opinion, to 
remember and honor those efforts of our ancestors and those who have fought for change, but also it's a call to action. It's that rally cry call to action for current and future generations to continue the fight. And we can continue the fight in a productive way because we don't want to build women up to tear men down because then we're just going to have other problems of inequality. So it's really about hearing everyone's issues, having everyone come to the table and say, these are our struggles, these are our issues, let's all listen to each other, let's all have this conversation and see how we can work together to move forward, see how we can find that common ground and how we can work to to stop a lot of these social uh, things, these social norms, these social ideas that aren't serving us anymore as a society, as a community. So lovely dose of girl power. I'm, I'm really enjoying that. But I think it's also just empowering in general. I think that there's a lot of empowering messages, not just for women, but for everyone to stand up for themselves and to express themselves in the way that they see uh, best. As long as they're not hurting anyone, then whatever way they see best to express themselves and to live their life is perfectly fine with me. Spicy opinion, but I think we all experience oppression at some point in our life, either because of our gender, because of our skin color, because of our sexual orientation, because of our income. It doesn't matter. We've all experienced oppression at some point, and all of those stories are valid. All of our experiences are valid and deserve to be heard and respected and talked about, and that's what this community exists for. So share your stories here in the comments, good, bad, and crazy. Talk about the things that you have struggled with, the things that you've experienced that have made it really difficult for you to thrive mentally and let's validate each other let's respect and listen to each other make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it you never know who might need to see it thank you magic mind for allowing this video to happen today <laughs> giving me the energy and the focus to do that i love you guys so much and i will see you soon Mwah.